Hey, 7th graders, this is Mr. Heller with another one of your flip lessons. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to kind of make the PowerPoint as we go. So you're going to have your notes. It's going to look like this when you're done. All right, you're going to have British strengths, American strengths, British weaknesses, American weaknesses. Then down at the bottom, you're going to have a 7-up sentence based on your notes. All right, here we go. All right, so first let's talk about British strength. So what did the British have going for them at the beginning of the American Revolution? Well, simply put, they were the biggest, best army in the world at the time. They had about 50,000 troops in their own army that they could send over to the Americans. It's going to take them a little bit of time to get there, but they had them. They also had about 30,000 loyalists who were willing who were willing to fight so that gives us a total of about 80,000 soldiers that Britain had at their disposal at any given time in the colonies remember that number all right number one number two they're very well trained they have not lost a battle a war in a very very long time um, they're they're the biggest, the, the, the best trained fighting force in the world that the world knows in 1776. Lastly, they have lots of supplies. They have guns, they have ammunition, they have uniforms, they have food. The, the, they just were getting a little ahead of ourselves. They have everything that they need to be successful in this war. All right. Let's look at the American strengths this time. All right. Number one, is the American people are patriotic. These folks are fighting for a reason. They know what their reason is. Their reason is fighting for freedom. They want to get rid of the king. They want to create a new government. They have a reason. It's kind of like the difference between like, oh, I'm going to go to war in Vietnam. Not a lot of people are going to sign up for that. But let's say if people invaded America and were trying to take over your house, people were probably going to be more willing to fight for that. They have a cause. They have a reason. All right. Um, they have a great, ooh, I don't know why it jumped up there. They have great leadership. And it starts at the top with Mr. George Washington. And later on, I'm going to put a picture in this so that we can kind of save that. But he's going to be their leader throughout the war. The, the, the very beginning to the very end, George Washington is the general. At their worst times, he's their leader. At their best times, he's their leader. He's a steady force throughout the American Revolution. And later, allies is going to be a big help, particularly, particularly the French. All right, and they are going to offer supplies to America. And that's going to be huge because America, not only do they have to create all this new government, they have to fight an army and create an army at the same time. A lot of things that they have to deal with going through to make sure everything's all set. All right, on the strength side, we also obviously are going to have some weaknesses. These are things that Britain does not have to go over them. So we talked about that, that lots of supplies that the British, that the Americans had. Big problem with that. All right. They have long distance for supplies. These supplies are not coming from the colonies. They're coming from England or other, um, other British colonies. So this is a three month trip to make supplies get there. Then once they get there, they have to go through the back country. They have to go from New York City, from Savannah, from Philadelphia, from the major ports that the um, British control to the front lines. This is going to take time. This is going to also offer Americans a chance to kind of attack and disrupt these, um, disrupt these supply lines. They have poor leadership. There's lots of changes. We're going to talk about them. General Howe, General Cornwallis, General, it seems like they're changing generals more than the more than you would change underwear at this time period. 
it is a big, big problem. And each of those leaders is going to have a different way to fight the war. So they're going to keep changing this, this aspect. For folks on sports teams, that's kind of like saying, oh, we're going to run all of these plays and then halfway through the season, oh, we're going to have to learn a completely new set of plays. It doesn't work out. And then lastly, kind of, if we go back to the the um, the mainland, Britain never supports this. They're, they're, why are we fighting another costly war? If they want to leave, leave. It's not a big deal for the everyday person living in England um, to get behind this. So there's not a lot of support for the war back home, which is a major British weakness. Okay, so let's look at the American weaknesses. Yeah, let's go 32. Number one, they have few soldiers. All right. Most that, George, on average, George Washington is going to have about 20,000 soldiers in the entire army. Look at those numbers for Britain again. Britain has four times that of many. All right. And the soldiers that they do have are untrained, right? Because what are those soldiers mostly? They're militia soldiers, so they're untrained, their farmers were guns, they're fighting to protect their homeland, but they're not ready for those European-style organized battles, okay? A major problem for the Americans throughout this war is going to be a lack of supplies, and we're talking guns, we're talking ammo, we're talking clothes, we're talking food. We're going to, the, there's reports, you know, of people, American soldiers in January fighting in Pennsylvania, which, you know, is very cold, without shoes on. That's a problem. How can we fight when we don't have those kind of things going for us? Overall, there's a weak government, and that's really just because the government hasn't been around. Okay? That's a problem. They, they don't know how to fight a war. They don't even know what the government's going to look like yet with the, with the Continental Congress. Um, and then lastly, there's always going to be money issues. All right, how do, you, how do governments make money? They tax. What was the problem with Britain? They were taxing us. So how are you going to fight a war to get rid of a country that's taxing you, but tax the people to fund that war? It's a problem, and it's going to be a big problem for the Americans going forward. All right, that's our flip lesson for today. Um, also, at the bottom, don't forget this. Okay, see this person's work. You got a sentence down there at the bottom. Who do you think has the best chance to win the American Revolution? Why? Do not use the word I in your answer. Use evidence from the chart to support your answer. So if you think Great Britain's going to win the war, looking at the notes, again, don't think about who actually did. Um, use, use something from those British strengths or maybe from American weaknesses. If you think America's still going to win the war, you're going to focus on American strengths or American weaknesses. As always, if you have any questions, hit me up on Schoology or post a message to the board. I'll see you later. Till then, Ellard out.